Hey everyone, Philosophy Guy here. And this time I thought I'd do something different than my normal Here's the Storm playthrough. I thought I would slow it down a little bit and talk about one of my favorite game series of all time, which is the Total War series, and play some Total War Warhammer. Uh, my favorite faction by far is the Vampire Counts. I like how they, since they don't have ranged units in the te technical sense, um, they do a lot of swarms and a lot of hitting in multiple angles. I feel like their battles don't slow down into a crash into the front lines and then let the archers take pot shots. This is... Yeah, it's a highly aggressive fighting style, and I like that. My first playthrough was at the Vampire Counts, and I really, really enjoyed it, so we're doing Vampire Counts. Part this, this time with the Von Karsteins. So Vlad and Isabella love each other. Um, they need to reinforce each other. So, and we need to get Castle... Our first objective is to claim Castle Dragonhof. Castle Dragonhof has gold. Excuse me. Castle Dragonhof has gold. Castle Dragonhof has uh, a special building for us. So we need that. We need that in our life. Vlad so we are Vlad. We have a bunch of bats. We have a bunch of Vargeists. We have a Blood Knight and ourselves. So... <laughs> Whoa, calm down, lady. So we're going to take both these vampiresses into our army. What do we got? Okay, we can summon more bats. We need something that lets us summon skeletons. Or, ooh. Or crypt ghouls. We could go completely past summoning your typical ground forces. Do I want typical ground forces or do I want... Fuck it, let's go crypt ghouls. No. Well, eh. This is a tough choice. No, Crypt Ghouls is the only one that goes up past three, so that needs to be in our main building. So yeah, I'm going to do normal, normal ground forces for now. Alright, so we've got 4,000 to deal with. Castle Drakenhof is going to be a pain in the ass to try to get. Does the moot... That's Sterland. The moot has almost nobody defending it. Templehof. Usually you go for Templehof. I think I'm going to take the moot. And I don't think I'm going to take it. I think I'm just going to get money from it. Lord of the day. I'll be declaring more, though. Well, I'll be declaring more no matter where I go. So, yeah. We're gonna go here first. Fuck you, Sterling. And... Blood. So, we're going to just auto-resolve. Very little bit of damage. And... Very little bit of loot. Alright. It's 400 if I loot it. If I raise it, it's just gone. Or I could you know what? I'm going to go ahead and occupy it. So I don't need the money. What I need is more territory right now because I'm just stuck with this little Schwarzwaffen. So we're going to grab the moot and we're going to build uh, just growth for now, I guess, because their money-making one isn't until over there. Vampire accounts suck at making money. The undead do not make money very easily. We're going to go Restless Dead just so I can move around the battlefield easier. And as for technology... Is there anything... Growth and income is what I want. So we're going to go the Lamian Book of the Dead. So I can get dim money growths. So we'll end the turn without recruiting anything. Man, I love Total War. If you've never played a Total War game... They are amazing. Uh, I started with Rome, and just the 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 ability to tactically get down and go see what's going on, like just just get down in there and dig into a battlefield, was amazing. It was revolutionary for me, and I played the shit at a Rome one. Um, I'll probably bring some of those. I kind of want to play Rome 1 on the channel. I might do that later. 
But basically, all the games are very similar. You move your units around the map, you get into a fight, um, you control on the battlefield, and you build uh, you build buildings to kind of support your war efforts. Now, where this game differentiates is, of course, a fantasy setting instead of a historical one, and it d um, brought everything down into little uh, provinces. So you can only build so many buildings before, because like in Rome 1, you could build anything anywhere. Um, it was just a matter of what you wanted to focus on first. So a lot of the time, you would just sit there and skip through every building, building whatever you wanted to, until finally it got to the point where your empire was so big, you would just uh, auto-manage everything. This you don't have to. You can skip between provinces very easily, and this little build hammer lets you know when you can build something. So I don't have the income... I don't have the income, really, to be building a lot of buildings right now. I kind of just need to wait. Unstoppable. So, Darkness if Zelig Van Kruger is in Castle Drakenhof... All shall here. know me and Okay. Tremble. Necromancy, I can raise these guys. 150, 300, and 375, and they cost that bottom one as upkeep. It's 150, 150, so it's the same for everybody. Fargastes are a thousand. I mean, they do a lot of damage. You'll see. You'll see in a little bit. So we're going to raise some skeletons, and we're going to raise the swordsmen, because I need them. I need some ground troops. And another group of swordsmen. So the spearmen are there to hold. The swordsmen are there to actually fight and do damage. And... Okay. So we've got two territories. As soon as the moot levels up a little bit... Oh, he's he's in our territory. Well, fuck that guy. What are you doing? Are you attacking Schwartzfin, or are you just fucking around? Okay, you do not. Like, okay, that's something you learn, is do not just run into another person's territory. Like, you didn't take your shoes off, you're getting crap everywhere, you're tracking in mud. I am unstoppable. Nope. You were rude to me, you died. Gonna mosey on. He does not. So, what happened is he refused the fight. I came in and said, I want to fight. He said no, and he backed off. But he doesn't have enough movement speed to get away from me, so I'm going to hunt him down and kill him. Okay, so these are my forces. These are his forces. He doesn't have shit. Um, the battle deployment, the balance of power, that tells you he's going to win if I hit auto resolve. Um, I usually do that when it's clear I'm going to win or clear I'm going to lose. Um. Uh, yeah. This won't even be entertaining to watch. So, we'll just kill him. Okay, so I can either give him up for money, I can kill them for leadership, or I can dominate them to replenish my units. Uh, nothing died. So, I'm gonna give him up for a little bit of cash. Just a little chunk of change. He dies, which should leave them open. Alright, so, Regiments of Renown... These didn't come out when the game shipped, but these are like super mercenary units you can train. Um, and you level, as you level up, you get these. So I've got the Koenig, Koenig, Koenigstein Stalkers. So I can get awesome skeletons with poison attacks. And I can get the Tithe, which I guess, I think just have a lot more health <laughs> than normal zombies. So I'm going to get him. That increases my that increases my ranks up to. I've got a pretty sizable force now. I've got 17 out of the 20 units, so I'm gonna move over here and I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get Fort Oberstein and then Castle Templehof. I believe is what I'm gonna do. King of Darkness. Okay. So we're gonna level up. You've got these uh these trees basically of what you can get. Uh, cunning. Supremacy, Invocation of Nahek, and the Hunger. We're going to do Invocation of Nahek. That's a spell that he already has. I'm going to get that because it lowers the cooldown. But basically, it heals your troops. So, what I can do is position uh, the count around where he needs to be, and then start buffing up my troops to keep them in the fight. So basically, if you can't get a good situation where you're hitting somebody from the flanks or the sides, anything like that, you basically want to keep your guy's health up as high as possible, and that invocation will do that. 
There's multiple. Melkoth's Mystifying Miasma does damage. I want to do Safeguard. I want to do Armor because these Vampresses... I'm going to build one to be in the fight. That one. This one is going to use Spirit Leech. Spirit Leech does direct damage against a single combatant. You can use that to assassinate single targets like the enemy leaders and things like that, which is what I want to do. We're going to increase my speed so we can get up to f the fort in, darkness. in one turn. Okay. So if you get engaged in combat right that your units are uh, weaker, like they're they're more exhausted. So you want to be careful with that, and also you can't initiate battle or anything like that. So, But I don't think they can jump me with anything. So here's the other vampire court. I have strength rank number one. I am the strongest in the entire world. Uh, sorry, Manifred, I'm not joining you. I'm going to wipe out every other pretender to the undead throne and take it. Has no one taught thee to respect thine elders? Man. Nope. So, Vlad is, of course, Dracula, basically, is what he's based on. Okay, we're going to shut that down, go into a normal stance. So he stuck a bunch of zombies, zombies, bats. I don't know what else he's got in there. What kind of defenses does the fort have? More zombies and skeletons. So it's going to be a big old army. They're going to have numbers. I'm going to have quality. And I've got no way to get around them to get to Castle Templehof. I could situate myself in between the two. And then go into uh, ambush mode and try to get him. But I can't raise dead. Recruit. I just don't have enough. Don't have enough dead bodies. Bow before me. Do I do it or do I not? Let's do it. Let's fucking let's get him. Because he also he's in that that forced march. Oh, yep. Okay. So this will be fun. I'm actually gonna fight this one. This will be fun to watch. So. Uh, the differences in the rest of the Total Wars in this one are, of course, the fantasy, so you have much more asymmetrical asymmetrical setup between the different races. Now, right now, I'm just fighting more vampire counts, but you'll see that later um, when I fight, like, dwarves and humans and stuff. Um, heroes, so, like, Vlad and those two vampire um, heroes are actually individual units that can go out and, like, interrupt things. Like, I can send them out on assassination or spying missions, or they can join your army and fight, and they do a lot of damage. Uh, flying units, these vampire bats and these vargeists all fly. They've got two units of vampire bats, so I will control the skies. And they have a lot of zombies. Also magic. Uh, Vlad can cast spells. The two vampire vampires I have with me. They can fly. All my units can vanguard deploy, which means they can deploy up closer to the enemy. Which I'm gonna do. Send them here. My blood knights are going to hang behind. I need them to run down uh, dogs, and I'm going to need them to run down the wizard. My vargeists are going to stay in the air, and my plan for them is when we get... When the two lines clash, I'm going to send the vargeists to the other side and charge them down into the flanks. Now, the thing that's unique about the vampire counts is that they actually don't have morale. Every other unit has morale. It's kind of... They have health, which determines if they get completely wiped out, and then they have morale. And morale is usually what ends up costing you the victory, or the battle, because your units run away. They, they get scared and run away. Vampire counts don't do that. Their units fight to the death. Uh, they just start disintegrating, which means their fighting gets weaker. Oh, I thought... For a second, I stacked them behind. Okay. That is a huge number of dudes. I underestimated the amount of dudes they had. That's a lot. Okay. So, vampire counts have no ranged uh, forces. So, we're going to send bats to bats. And just clear the skies. Also, yeah, I'll send my Vargeists in. So, we're just going to clear the skies, bats to bats. I thought he had invocation of... Oh, there it is. 
So I'm gonna drop Invocation of Nehek on my bats to keep them healthy. Because I would like to use them more. We're gonna send the Vargeist versus their bats. What is that? That does damage to multiple combatants. Come on, Vlad, get over there. Can you get over there? Man, maybe I should have sent everything in there. Because my bats are running out of juice. Alright, Vlad's going to cast that. And my bats are going to start healing. And it even brings them back to life, too. If they uh, if they die... Before... Uh, or, I mean, if they get full health, um, they actually start resing units back. Okay, you see that gray bar? That's the morale. So, like, these guys are crumbling. They have no morale. They're taking losses every second. Whether or not my bats were there. Okay, my Vargeist are holding. So these guys are in a holding pattern because I initiated the attack. So they can just sit there all day. So I need to get them to move. I need to get them to move and they're probably going to surround my, uh, my units. So I need to find their leader, which is this guy here. Extended cast range. So I need to snipe him to get Dieter... Need to get Dieter out of there. Alright, so he's going to start taking damage over time. The loss of a leader or hero has disastrous effects on the enemy's morale. Now, in a normal... In anything that wasn't vampire counts, uh, my flying units would have been immediately assaulted by the enemy's aerial units. That doesn't happen, of course, because they don't have any... any uh, not... My aerial units have been assaulted by their ranged units, like their archers and stuff. They don't have any, because they're vampire counts. So, I'm left to pretty much freely... Let's go buff up our bats again. I'm left to pretty much freely dictate how this battle goes once I control the air. So that's why they're kind of mashing all their forces in together, because they know what I'm going to do, is anytime I see a situation that benefits me... I'm going to pull Vlad back. They've almost got these bats. So they are sending dogs in. To get... Because they think I have a, a, a squishy back row, but I don't. I have no squishy back row. I have nothing but, like, zombies and shit. Okay, those bats are done. I'm going to go take out these dire wolves. If I can take out their cavalry, or their, their fast units... If I can take those out effectively, then the enemy has nothing but slow-ass zombies. And I'm not scared of slow-ass zombies. I'm going to drop that spell right in the middle. And so we're going to keep this big cluster of the guys alive. All right, we're going to drop zombies right in front to absorb a lot of the attacks here. Um, so, yep, yeah, their dogs are almost dead. That top bar is their health bar. And they're completely broken by the aggressiveness of the charge. They're done. These bats are done too. Alright. So now we're gonna drop. We're gonna get our troops flying back over our forces. Alright, here comes the zombies. So we got spearmen and zombies and zombies. So I'm gonna bring my tithe zombies over. Okay, so he saw what happened. He's not going to devote... Oh, he might again. Okay, he's not going to devote everything in, but he's still going to try to charge into the side. So, again, my flank... God, that's a nightmare to look at. Look at that. If I saw that flying towards me in a medieval-style battle, uh-uh. I'd be done. All right, we are engaging zombies in... Victory's in our grasp already. Alright, we are going to do that. Okay, and... We're going in! And all three of my leaders are going to go on to Deep... Dieter? Dietrich? Alright. So I'm going to line up my aerial forces behind them. So many zombies. So many zombies. Get him. Get him, skeletons. 
All right. So we're gonna charge our blood knights in there. These guys were just gonna make a mad smash and just beat the shit out of everything they got there. Skeletons. Uh, looks like they are wanting to run because of the numbers. So we're gonna get him, hit him with a buff. Our flying guys are in there. So hopefully that buff will counteract their low morale and keep them from crumbling. We'll hit them. I don't have the magic for that, so we'll hit them with a spell there to thin out their numbers. This is that mystifying miasma, and it just drops nastiness on them. You only have so much magic, and it charges up very quickly in the beginning, but the more you use it, the less quickly it charges. All right. So we're doing good. Our charging guys just annihilated that thing. So we're going to go over there and get those zombies. We're going to go charge in the back of these skeleton warriors. And this is pretty much what, once you get everything kind of organized... I look at them go! Once you get everything organized, once you get it to the point where you're like, the enemy's stuck, they have no way to quickly react to anything I do, you just find openings and start shinding in cavalry. You know, anywhere you see that they're strong, send in cavalry, send in your aerial guys, let them work for a little bit, and then pull them out if they start taking damage. And I like to devote everything into one big fist. I know it's not... It's probably not the best idea to do that, but you you get compounded, you know, effort on these guys. Broof. You know, I should probably be charging my enemy everywhere along their lines. But I don't want to do that. I want to swing in with a big old fist. Yep, they crumbled, and they're gone. That is a pretty decisive victory for me, pretty quickly. And hopefully, a lot more of my battles will go like that. We'll just meet lines in the center, and hopefully I'll have the air and cavalry advantage. And just uh, get all that sweet, sweet flanking bonuses. I deployed 920, lost 230, mostly zombies, I would imagine. Uh, they got most of their kills... Dieter and this group of dogs. <laughs> My Blood Knights got 165. Those Blood Knights are worth their weight in gold. 722. And we've got the fort. I can either sack it for a shit ton of gold, but again, I need territory right now. I need more building options, and I need more income coming in. So we're going to occupy. And we've got the fort. I, am I don't have the movement range to get over there. Oh, that little plus. So 2,000 people died there, and because 2,000 people died there, I have more powerful units that I can raise. Which it should calculate next time. The world uh, next turn. Alright, invocation of Nehek. We're gonna do... Coven of Undeath, because I want my units to get XP fast. All right, so in the first couple of turns, we've taken two pieces of territory. We've got a nice little, nice little, uh, nice little section here. I don't have a main province, provincial capital yet, but it'll come. So I think it's a good start. Thank you for joining me. Um, we're gonna play this out to the end. I'm gonna keep playing until victory is mine. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Have a nice day.